I'm in a bit of a predicament right now. I need to get back to the US. I'm currently in Canada, but I cannot fly back because I need to transport two dogs. One of them is particularly large. It's a big fat dog that just barely scrapes over the weight limit for flying it back. Normally I would ship it cargo, but uh, they've suspended all their cargo operations because of COVID. My last option is to drive the damn dogs all the way down to California. The only problem is I don't have a car to do that with, so I have to rent a car. Car rental companies right now do not want to rent out a car to someone who plans on driving across the border because it is going to be hellish for them to get that car back. Well, it's going to be hellish for them to get this car back. I told them, yeah, I'm just taking a one-way trip, Edmonton to Calgary. That's all I'm doing. But maybe that trip goes an extra 3,000 miles. If you think that's a little rude to do to Hertz, I don't give a shit. It's a worthwhile experiment. Fuck Hertz. Hertz can suck my dick. I'm currently pulled over because I smelled urine. She did not urinate. That is very good. At some point I smelled something horrendous, but that must have been a, just a gross fart. I made it across. Didn't seem like they gave a shit about the rental car. He was mainly concerned with my kombucha being alcohol. I don't know if this is at every border, but this sweet grass and fucking Putinani border. The guy I got was a fucking asshole. This guy thought he was in Afghanistan. He thought bombs were going off all around him. I pull up. He's just waiting for me to say something. And I'm like, I'm not saying something. This is your job. You're supposed to do the thing. So instead of playing this game of chicken, I say... I'm here to go to America. That's what I say to him. I'm looking to go to into America. He says, shut off your car, roll down the windows. So I, I misheard him. I thought he meant roll up the windows because my window was rolled down already. So I roll it up and then I was like, oh, cra I was confused. So I crack open the door to ask him, what are you doing Open your door? I didn't tell you to do that. A lot of that, I didn't tell you to do that. Repeatedly telling me, I didn't tell you to do that. And it's just like, ah! I can now relate to black Americans when they get pulled over and they get shot in their back 15 times after the cop, you know, says, you're not complying. It's very stressful. I, I couldn't believe that I wasn't able to follow those instructions that he gave me. But sure enough, he thought I was a domestic terrorist. Fair enough. But now that I'm over here on the American side, I was expecting to be greeted by Uncle Sam waggling his dick around. But instead, I'm greeted with this shitty gas station with a pump that, by the way, that's been going for the past uh, 10 minutes. I think it's one gallon every five minutes on this pump. He is enjoying it. Did you enjoy riding through Lethbridge? Was Lethbridge fun for you? Coochie, coochie, coo. He's old and his spine hurts. And he has spina bifida. He has introvertible disc disease. Poor little guy. So long, shithole. We have arrived at the Airbnb. I do know how to pick the creepiest Airbnbs. Quiet. You're making me feel worse about my choice. Take. That's something that you'll notice when you try to get Airbnbs in very rural areas. Basically, as bougie as you can get in the middle of bumfuck nowhere is going to be a cabin. I'm a little bit jealous of the dogs because they get right back into their routine. Meanwhile, I'm looking around this place and the only thing I'm thinking is, I'm going to have a hard time sleeping in these catacombs up at the top of the stairs. The nice thing about having doges though is these guys... Oh shit. Someone found the badger skin. Ooh. Badger skin. That's not for you, Blitz. Yeah, that's a big buffalo rug. You better be careful. That's a literal monster. What are you smelling on there? I think he's determining that they didn't wash it. Slash R, what is this thing? We're in a bit of a pickle here because we want to go down the stairs. But uh, Scaredy Cat Fiona doesn't want to move past the big uh, buffalo skin. Come here. Good boy. She doesn't want to come because she thinks the buffalo and the badger are gonna hurt her. Good, good girl, come here. Yes, good job. All right, it's the morning. We're gonna go on a morning walk and then we're gonna hit the road for eight 
effing hours. That's not something to get excited about. That's hell. All right, sweet cream. Ham and Swiss. If you're gonna ride my ass, at least pull my hair. We're currently in Montana, and what I'm noticing that is unique about Montana is that there's a lot of variety in the license plates, and these don't feel like they're broken up by decade, like, oh, that's just an old style. It seems like it's anarchy with license plates here. In California, we got, we got one license plate. Alert, red alert. There's mountains and there's trees. Somebody got pulled over, but it wasn't me. It was a car that was speeding like an absolute psychopath. It made me think like why I fucking hate speeding tickets. There's this level of ambiguity that exists that just allows people to debate. There's naturally gonna be some people who say, oh yeah, five miles over the speed limit, that's totally fine. Then there's gonna be super autistic people who are like, no, you went five miles over the speed limit. That's called breaking the law. What juxtaposition. This is uh, quite the upgrade from Montana, isn't it? Isn't it, fuzzy little fellas? I think I like Salt Lake. I think I dislike Montana based on one Airbnb I stayed at. He wants to get his dildo. Suck on your dildo, little dude. Get your toy. Get your toy. Give it a paw. Yeah, there you go. Whoa, what a little munchkin. <sighs> that was a long day. How you doing, pumpkin squash? Oh, you hang paintings in your house? I hang legendary schematics for the objects such as the light bulb. It wasn't invented by Thomas Edison. It was actually invented by a black man. Bet you didn't know that. I'm gonna miss this Airbnb. They had the most awesome nightstands. They had fresh plants that helped cut down on the CO2 within the house. They had full body mirrors so I could do this. They had this thing, this creature that follows you around room to room for some reason and does a lot of spin maneuvers. That made this whole experience very enjoyable. He made sure there's no stink in the bed. He examines the stink in each room and he goes crazy for it. So I just spent an unnecessary hour and a half in the middle of Nevada because some dumbass decided it was a good idea to lock the car while his owner was outside of the vehicle. Smart. Real smart. Real thousand IQ play there by the dumbass sitting next to me. The big fat bitch broke out of her kennel. So I guess she's gonna be a bed dog tonight. <laughs> Look at this evilness. Reno, Nevada was uh, not as much of a shithole as I thought it was going to be. I probably won't be back anytime soon, but I don't think I'd cringe at the idea of coming back. The Airbnb, on the other hand, was a shithole. Uh, mainly for the fact that the Airbnb host wanted to pull that, that classic Airbnb host bullshit of listing their home as an entire place. I don't have a problem with this for like spatial reasons. It's not as if I needed to run around in every room of the house. There's ample room to play hide and seek in this Airbnb. Typically when people want to reserve an entire place, they're doing so so they have ample privacy. They're not doing it so that they could spread out. All right, hey, you be quiet. Careful. She likes to jump straight down without looking. Here you go, my buddy. Is that exciting? Come here. Is that exciting to yeah. smell dirty socks in the street? Oh, dirty sock street. Oh, oh shit. Back on the road, headed down to San Diego. Our trip is now complete. Edmonton to San Diego, 2,800 kilometers in three to four days. I don't know the exact amount. I'm pretty sure it was four days. I sort of started lagging there toward the end. We're here now. And today is the day of reckoning. The way I see it is if they tack on a bunch of fees and I get financially fucked by this, 
I'm just going to title this video something very clickbaity, like how Alamo scammed me out of $3,000. I don't think it'd be $3,000, but I, I feel like that would be the top end that they could charge me. It's baffling to me, but they're the experts. I'll let them figure that one out. The results are in. For a trip from Edmonton to California, my total charges are... You see that right there? Surely you see this right here. $3,000. I don't think it'd be $3,000. It cost me $3,000! I think I accurately determined what the worst outcome is. I hope this video was educational for you guys. I honestly had no idea how much it was going to be. I didn't even... I sort of had this weird assumption that there was also going to be further consequences. Like the, the guy at the car return was going to beat the shit out of me. If you have disposable income or a YouTube video that will pay for at least half the, t uh, half the charges, then it might be worth it. If money's tight, I would recommend not renting a car and going 1,700 miles. Though, if you're in Canada and you need to come to the US, you're probably not gonna have very many options if you have a big fat dog you need to transport. Maybe just sell the big fat dog. I will say that these two are happy campers. Say hi, campers. Hi. The happiest campers.